Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, we're starting our next talk, which is our 1115, uh, Exploring Megacity. So some of you guys may have noticed, uh, it's not running right now, but we've had it up on a bunch of the big screens over at the booth, our Megacity demo, um, which is one of our new demonstrations of our data-oriented tech stack. So this is a project created by us. Uh, and rather than just talking about it, I'll actually show you a little bit. So we have in the demo, there's an on-rails flyover that you can play, but I'm actually going to fly around um, with the player controller. So we have here this, this car and this rich city environment. Um, and you can control with the mouse. You can click to fly and uh, drag to steer. And you can see that we have a lot of detail here. We have hundreds of volumetric lights, all of these air conditioners and scaffolding and shacks. There are also a few thousand uh, AI-powered vehicles. So we can see uh, the cars here. If we fly down to this trench, we can also see that uh, as we fly past them, they will swerve out of the way to avoid the player. So these are navigating dynamically. They're not uh, you know, animated. They're actually pathing uh, through the environment and running traffic patterns. Um, this, I always love flying down here into this kind of horrible smog-filled trench. And so what we're seeing is that as we fly, let's see if I can turn around here. As we fly through the environment, we have chunks of the city loading in, right? If you've ever worked with Unity before, you will know that loading in the past an environment of this size would have been extremely difficult or impossible, right? Particularly at this level of detail. Um, and so what we're doing here is we're streaming in um, all of these elements as the player gets close. And you can see uh, when we get close, you know, here we have the, the lights casting onto the walls. Um, and we're loading a much more detailed representation as the player gets, gets close using a level of detail system. So what I'm going to give you guys is, I've only got about 20 minutes here, so I'm going to give you a kind of a high level overview um, and walk you through some of the technology that made this possible. So as I mentioned, so Unity, so this is a project created internally by Unity. It's a, a small team of just a couple of artists some of the guys who worked on our FPS sample demo, um, and then a number of internal programmers. Um, not a large team uh, working on this. It was first shown at Unite LA in October of 2018. And the main focus of this is to demonstrate what we call the data-oriented tech stack, or DOTS, which you'll hear me talking about a bunch. Now, you may have heard the terms ECS, or burst compiler, or job system in the past. These are all included in the data-oriented tech stack, right? This is an easier way to talk about this whole um, stack of technologies. So some numbers, right? In the scene that you saw, we have 4.5 million mesh renders, 100,000 individual audio sources. A little hard to hear the audio here, but all of those air conditioners are emitting sound. All of the vehicles are emitting sound, right? And this is something that we just couldn't have done before using our, our previous technology. 5,000 dynamic vehicles flying around and pathing, 200,000 unique objects making up each of those buildings, right? Those buildings are not single objects. They're composed of thousands of sub-objects and running at uh, 60 frames a second. So Megacity is an example. So Unity, we don't make games, right? We make engine technology, but we do do a lot of intense dog fooding internally, and Megacity is a good example of this, right? What we call production-led development, right? Where we have an internal production, in this case, designed to test dots and to kind of figure out really how we're going to create content with dots and, and how, it's, how we're going to work with it. And so the development of Megacity heavily influenced the development of dots, right, and, and the workflows uh, that, we're, that we're creating for people to work with this new technology. So through the process, you know, we're creating workflows not just for programmers, right, because it's obviously a, a a script system, uh, but also for artists, right? How are artists going to be able to work with content uh, in this new uh, way of representing objects in the world? So 
initially, as we were getting ready for the October 2018 release, we had to make some changes to the engine core, right, to the C++ part of Unity uh, to make this possible. Those changes are now integrated into 2019.1, which is out now in beta, right? If you're, if you're watching this here, it's in beta 8, uh, and that's publicly available. Um, and so, you know, I'm using this term dots. So the, the real goal of dots is to be both highly performant and also scalable, right? One of the key ideas of Megacity is this idea of streaming in and out content, um, which is one of those things that allows us to get to this large scale. So DOTS is a, a suite of technologies which encompasses the Entity Component System, or ECS, right? This is a new way of working with objects and behaviors in Unity. If you've used Unity before, you'll be familiar with the idea of a game object with a mono behavior attached. Now with ECS, we have a much more granular and much more performant way of doing this. Um, that's a, a fundamentally new approach. Native collections allow us to work with sets of data, arrays of data usually in very, very efficient ways that are also efficient in terms of interacting with the hardware, particularly with the CPU. The C Sharp job system allows us to parallelize user code, right, and run across multiple cores. We've been working on jobifying the internals of the Unity engine. Now we're also working on bringing some of that parallelism to, uh, to the C Sharp environment as well. The Burst compiler is our new compiler which uses a subset of C Sharp, right, what we call high performance C Sharp, which does not use things like reflection and garbage collection, um, but allows us to generate native code from C Sharp that runs really, really fast. Now, I just gave like the 30-second definition of all of these things. We actually have multiple hour-long talks on each of these features uh, available on YouTube if you want to go and learn more. So one of the things, one of the questions that we encounter with this, right, is how do we work between this entity representation of our world and with game objects, right? So in the context of a game object, every game object in Unity has to have what's called a transform component, which represents the position, rotation, and scale, right? This is everything. It could be your game manager, could be your UI, right? Things that maybe that don't need those things, uh, but still have to have them, right? Now, moving into the world of entities, we can really choose and define exactly what data we want to record and manipulate, which allows us to gain a much more granular level of control and also achieve really, really significant gains in performance. So one of the key features that made Megacity possible and particularly allowing people to edit Megacity and work with it in the editor uh, is this idea of sub-scenes, right? So this is a new concept for Unity users. And basically, it's the question of how do we work with this entity-based data in the, in the editor at edit time, right? So, and particularly, how do we work with large complex scenes where if in our kind of existing game object model, if we wanted to open the entire city and work on it, uh, that would be very, very difficult, right? So, sub scenes allow us to work in the familiar game object component workflow at edit time and then convert that representation into entity data so that it can run super, super fast, right? So for example, if you're working on one of the buildings in Megacity, you can open that as a subscene, edit it using the tools that you're familiar with in a game object representation, including attaching mono behaviors and so on. Then, or for example, in this case, we have like a mono behavior, a mono behavior in the scene which says, this building is static. It's never going to move. When we close the subscene, it will discard all of the data that it doesn't need and make a very simplified ECS representation of that that can run super, super fast. So the analogy that I've been using is it's like editing a layered image in an image editing program, right? You have your layers, your undo history, you have all this flexibility uh, that you need for your editing workflow. But when you actually want to put it out to a runtime, then you're going to want a flat texture like a PNG, right? So we're preserving that editing uh, capability in the subscene, but creating another representation of it that's going to run 
super fast in our uh, player. So streaming is another core aspect of Megacity. So the way that the data architecture is designed is it's designed to be modular, allowing the scene to work without the entire scene being present, right? So one analogy I like to use is it's a little bit like a database, right? You have a database. The data, a database expects records to be added or subtracted, right? It doesn't, it's not going to fall over if some set of records gets, is not present when it's trying to query the database, right? And so this works the same way. Because we have a situation where things will be streaming in and out, we don't know what data is going to be present, it's designed to continue to function under various conditions. And so an example of like the way the streaming architecture is set up here, when we load the scene, we literally are just loading in the bounding boxes for the buildings, which determine visibility and whether we're going to want to load the higher definition LODs, levels of details. We load the lowest LOD models, right, which are just basically textured boxes or very simple geometry. And then we also load in the traffic paths for the vehicles as splines. And so to give you an idea of kind of the scale of the difference, we have the, we, in the amount of data that we load in to load the whole city is the same amount of data that we would represent one building at its highest level of detail, right? So it's a very simplified uh, representation. And then as the car or the camera flies through the city, we're going to load in the high detail content that we need to, to make it look rich. So rendering is also interesting. So we're rendering this with, I say, vanilla HDRP, which just means the high definition render pipeline that's publicly available. It's not super customized, uh, or it's not customized at all. It's just the publicly available version of HDRP. Now, we do use an additional package that talks between the entity representation of the data and the kind of existing Unity rendering tech, in this case, the high definition scriptable render pipeline. So, and this is in a C sharp package, right? So if you want to inspect this code, debug it, potentially modify it, you can. It's available to you. Uh, we're also using what are called renderer batches. And so what we're doing here is based on what has been, and this is based on what has been streamed in, right? So as we stream in, let's say, buildings or cars, we will load them into a big array, right? There's a big array of meshes, a big array of materials. And we don't rebuild those arrays until they're streamed in or out, right? So we're doing many fewer operations as opposed to, for example, uploading them every frame, and we get a lot of performance out of that. So as I mentioned, the hybrid renderer is a separate c -sharp package also from the entities package, right? So it acts as a bridge between the existing Unity rendering system and the data-oriented tech stack. And importantly, this allows us to use all of the other HDRP features that we're working on and shipping, like shader graph, or the post-processing stack. And it allows our artists who already know HDRP to continue to use the workflows that they're familiar with. Most importantly, it's available now to explore. You can go to unity.com slash megacity. You can grab the source and check it out. Uh, it has all the source code, all the assets, all the required custom code, right? The places where we needed to extend Unity is in c -sharp packages, right? So this runs on. 2019.1 that's out now, um, and you can go and check it out. So thank you so much for, for joining me and for listening, uh, and I'll take some questions uh, if anybody has any. Thanks.